this. You know, recently I've been doing videos on uh, the Ninja Image, and we're going to talk about Hakama today. And we're going to go from this. So this is a uh, Ninja Skills book, and you in Ninja and Samurai training, you want to be sort of training in a in a different way or wearing different things. And I'm going to go more into that in future videos. But basically about hakama so hakama the long flowy trousers that samurai people wear now these are often associated with martial arts such as aikido yaido things like that now actually the hakama are official um wear their ceremonial wear uh, that's the type of things you would use them for we have one wonderful quote from the 1600s which says if you have to go through the castle gate so you're living in the town, but if you go through a castle gate, make sure you have your hakamaro. Now this implies that a they're highly ceremonial. They're like you're you're going to, into the place where the high ranking people are. Don't be caught without your hakamaro on. And you might be going, well, why would you not have your pants on? In old Japan, they used long kimonos. Even males had long kimonos, and you can tuck them up uh, and put your hakamaro on there. Big flowy trousers because they go over like long. Uh, kimonos and there's different ways to wear them there are different styles of kimonos you can wear but on the whole everyone in japan was walking around with pretty much bare legs and uh, a, a dressing gown on so basically most people have bare legs and a dressing gown and when they went into these sort of um situations where they were talking to higher ranking people or in a place where they might see higher ranking people they have to put their formal kimono on uh, their, their formal hakama on tie the correct knot and all that get everything correct and in they go and do it now but when they're just walking around the town they're just walking around the town with their bare legs and their kimono sometimes the kimonos are tied up so they've got like almost like shorts on because it's hot because remember it's a hot place japan but then when you go into, when you go traveling, you don't want to have bare legs going traveling. You get all your legs scratched and everything, the stones on the road, the dust, the dirt. So sometimes they have uh, traveling hakama. These are, have different names. A lot of people know them as eager bakama, but there are various names for them. But they are worn by almost anyone, farmers included, just for traveling, for working, to keep the crap off your, you know, off your legs, to stop yourself being scraped on everything and all that. So what you find in Japanese society is that near the castle and within the castle, this is only in times of peace, people are wearing hakama, especially when they're going to any sort of social gathering or society thing. They're going to the market, they're going to the shop, they're just seeing this, they'll probably just have a kimono on, off they go. Long kimono, short, you know, there's certain restrictions on dress and they they don't necessarily have to have any trousers on. That's the great thing about a kimono, it's a dressing gown, but long. Men included, you see some of the old samurai films, they're all their long kimonos. Now, if you're going out of town, you're going to put something to travel well in. Little cape, travelling, uh, hakama, off you go. Well, they're the three situations. But what does that mean for us today, wearing them in martial arts training? Well, the reason that you get them a lot in martial arts is because martial arts is done in a dojo, which is derived from the zendo, the zen hall. And a lot of these places were spiritual places, high-ranking places, and you went to them and you paid homage. There's a kamidana there and you're praying to God. So you've got to dress good. So but that's an Edo period of things, a late Edo period thing where everybody starts to dress really nice. And, you know, that's not to say they didn't have it. They absolutely did have, um, they did, sorry, training Hakama in the old days. No problem there. That, that's true. So training in Hakama is fine. But this is where it crosses over. You have to be careful. There's not one type of Hakama. There are many types of Hakama. And training was normally done in shorter Hakama. Fighting actual fighting was done in very short hakama and if things are kicking off you put your tra you put your short hakama on tuck them up and off you go and i've seen what i've got a wonderful picture of this down in my archive somewhere of um a riot in tokyo and the person who did the painting was the man who was at the riot or he was the one watching the paint say changes do that and it showed the body armor they had on the types of tops they had on the <coughs> excuse me bloody hell that, well, that didn't go right the um the short stuff on so you don't just say hakama and that's one thing there are different versions you get the ones that are dead long and come off your feet you get the ones that just come down to your toes and are used in sort of zen and movement and archery you get the ones that are hiked up and are short for fighting or combat or grappling do you know what i mean that's why and then obviously it changed when karate and judo come in they ditched that and just got some 
some slender pants on. That's why we have the karate suit today, uh, you know, to just get rid of the hakama. Because most of it's done in a dojo underneath the eyes of the gods and therefore under someone superior and therefore you're wearing hakama. So if, so guys, I will do more videos on this with a bit more concrete things for you to do. But just remember this, hakama are not all the same. There are multiple types of hakama, even up to horse riding hakama and, and seeing the Lord hakama. There's lots of different things. One day I would love to do a video on the various types of hakama. So if somebody wants to do that research and send it to me, we'll make the video together. So if you're training in ninjutsu, this is, you You know the image of the, the, the um, I'll put it on the screen, but you know the image on the screen. Basically, that's not incorrect. One of the two or three images we have of a ninja are wearing these, but they're green or pink. It's either a pink top and green pants or um, green top and pink pants. I can't quite remember which way around. It's like a sort of reddish pink. So, but there's no problem with you wearing them in black. That's no problem. So what you probably want to avoid is wearing, going out, doing, um, what's the word? Creepy stuff, you know, creeping around and all that in Hakama traditional floor it's like ceremonial i am guilty of this and there are pictures of me doing it because just when you're training and you're filming videos i remember we're filming a ton of videos just get it done and get it and i understand sometimes you can't not quite but just keep in your mind that doing ninjutsu training shinobu no jutsu you shouldn't really be wearing hakama like that unless you are um they're clinched at the bottom or you can be wearing a kimono that's pulled up and tied round your waist um, and then the long sleeve one. Now remember, you should be wearing the ties and everything, but I will do how to dress. I'm gonna to go to a proper dojo up in the north when I get a chance and how to dress for all the different types of samurai training. I'll do a longer video on that, but whenever I get up to the north, it's like five or six hours away from here. So uh, I'd have to drive, I'll do a long drive to do it. So I might do it um, at some point this year, maybe. Let's see, let's see. Right, so there you go, guys. So just from this video, it's only a start video, take away that, Hakama are not always correct in the situations for samurai training. We see them today, but historically, not always. So just be careful about when and where you wear Hakama, especially for shinobi training. Okay, so just be aware of that. Right, good luck to everyone. Get yourself a copy of um, Ninja Skills. <laughs>